Welcome to Simulation Lab. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this scene here using 3ds Max and Adobe Premiere. And stay tuned to the end of the video where I show you how to track a camera in the real world using my favorite new app. Now friends, it's time to enter the back rooms. Okay, let's get started. I have 3ds Max pulled up. And if you're not familiar with 3ds Max, I do have a beginner's crash course on using 3ds Max, so I'll leave a link for that video in the description. First thing we're going to want to do is go up to Customize, Unit Setup, and change our uh, display unit scale to US standard uh, feet and fractional inches and change our system units to one unit equals one inch. Click OK and we're ready to rock and roll. The next thing we want to do is configure our rendering engine. So for this uh, tutorial I'm going to be using FStorm for my rendering engine and there's a million different rendering engines out there but I like FStorm the best because it's super fast and you can download it here. And I'll, link I'll leave a link for this website in the description, fstormrender.com, and you can download the free trial. And if you want to get some quick inspiration for what backrooms actually look like, you can do a quick Google search for backrooms and you'll see all these really creepy images pull up. Um, this style was made really popular by Kane Pixels, so I definitely recommend checking out his YouTube channel. And without further ado, let's start creating our scene. So I'll Alt W into the perspective viewport, and the first thing we're going to want to do is create a box. So under create, uh, we'll go ahead and create a box there, just somewhere in our scene. Go into the Modify tab. We're going to set the length to be 80 feet, width to be 80 feet, and the height to be something like 10 feet, right? Zero this out in the X and Y. And uh, first thing we're going to want to do is we'll create some doorways on the four corners, right? So I'll drop down my modifiers list here and add edit poly to the stack and then what I'll do is I'll grab the edges I'll go ahead and hit connect and I'll connect two segments and then I'll just drag these in something like that and I'll make a little doorway there you know something that looks like a person can fit through it and you can be a lot more precise about this if you'd like um, go ahead and click OK and then I'll grab these edges and I'll just do the same thing click this little settings button here and it'll create a new uh, edge loop there for another doorway and if I go ahead and drop down um, my display settings here and I'll go to edge faces so we can see all of our edges right so now we have four doorways the next thing we're going to want to do is um, go into our left view here and I'll grab all of these edges all of the side edges and I'll go ahead and click connect and I just want to create one edge loop there and this doesn't really matter I'll just zero all that out click OK and then I'm going to grab my vertices here. So my, my points there that we just created, and you can see that on Z it's at five feet. What we want to do is set that to something more realistic, like eight feet. And an eight foot door is pretty tall, but yeah, it'll look cool. So with that done, now we have our little doorways and we can extend these out a little bit to create hallways. So I'll grab all four of my doors. And then I'll go to extrude and I'll extrude these by local normals and then we'll extrude them out to something like 12 feet. So with that done, the, the goal here is to, if we right click on our snaps toggle and we can choose vertex snap. And I just wanna make sure that this thing can actually tile. That's the, the, the goal here is like, if you wanted to create an endless backrooms world, you could tile it like this where all the doorways connect sort of like this. And I just wanted to show you that as an example. Um, in my my sample video, I didn't actually add any rooms here, but maybe in a future video, we could bring these rooms into a game engine like Unity or Unreal, and we could procedurally generate these little rooms uh, so you can run through them endlessly. So that'd be kind of a fun thing. So if you're interested in that, uh, leave a comment down below. Okay, so next thing we want to do is we'll grab our, with our 
doorways selected there we'll just go ahead and delete those we don't really need them and then what we'll also do is go ahead and turn off my snaps toggle and we'll just grab all of our ceiling surfaces there and we'll just delete those too we don't really need those next thing we're probably going to want to do is separate out our floor so we can apply a separate material to it and just make it our lives a little easier in the long run so what I'll go ahead and do is I'll grab all of our floor faces even in the little hallways there and I'll go ahead and just detach those from this object so click on detach cool so with that done what I'll go ahead and do is I'll put on a normal modifier on this and I'll just flip the normal so they're facing upward and then I want to flip the normals also on my walls because they're currently facing outward so um, let's go ahead and toss a normal modifier on this and so now all the walls are facing inward and then the next thing we want to do is create a ceiling plane right so I'll click on plane and turn on my snaps toggle and extend that out now if you look at some of our reference photos that we have here uh, the back rooms typically have this acoustic ceiling tile that we would find in a typical office building. It's kind of maybe a little dirty and has these glowing yellow lights. So this is what we're going to create with this ceiling plane tile here. So what we're going to want to do is increase our length and width, width segments in our modifiers here. Um, just something like, I don't know, 24 by 24? Something like that. That looks kind of good. Um, and then what we're going to want to do is toss on an edit poly modifier on this and we're going to grab everything so we can do control a with the faces selected right and we're going to inset this by group first we're going to do um i don't know like say one inch something like that and then we're going to do it again inset by this time by polygon and that's and that's what we're going to that's what's going to create our um sort of ceiling grid right and you can click OK on that. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is to extrude the those faces downward um, to give the uh, ceiling tiles themselves a little bit of a thickness. Right. So we'll go ahead and do extrude. And then we'll do hmm, by local numbers is fine. And we'll do negative, I don't know, 0.5 inches. Right. And that should push it down a little bit. Okay, next we'll create a camera just so we can see what our scene is starting to look like. So we'll go in the top view and go to create cameras and drop down to F-Storm, create F-Storm camera. And we'll just turn off our snaps toggle and we'll just drag this somewhere in our scene. We'll grab both the camera and the target and we'll just zero this out on X. So it's looking directly forward. Then we'll go into one of our side views here, maybe our left side view and we'll drag this up. So I just want to see what this is generally looking like. And what we can do is in our one of our viewports here, maybe our top right viewport, we'll go to camera, F-Storm camera, and they'll switch us to default shading. So if we look at this, this is looking pretty good. It's looking like a tiled grid ceiling. Okay, next up, if we go to our top view, we're going to create some interior partitions, some walls. Because right now it's looking a little blank. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll create a box and I'll just stick the box somewhere in here like Maybe about that that big Something where we can create some corridors like a little corridors where we can look down and maybe we'll create some uh, Partitions that look like I don't know they used to be offices or something uh, Make it kind of creepy. So what we'll do is uh, in the modifiers I just want to make sure this is the same height as the ceiling. So we made our ceiling 10 feet. So 10 feet that's looking pretty good and I'll just leave that there for now maybe we'll create another box and we'll stick that like somewhere over here like that and you don't have to make this perfect or you can if you want to but just for now I just wanted to just get some geometry mocked up so on the box we'll drop down and we'll uh, add an edit poly modifier onto that and then maybe we'll create some edge loops so I'll select these edges. I'll just go Alt Q to isolate this object just so I can see the box itself. So I'll just grab these uh, edges, do connect. I'll just connect them one time and it'll stick it over here. Um, we can sort of extrude this out. You know, maybe sort of make it um, what looks to be like a, an office or something. We'll do extrude again. And then maybe once more. 
something like that. And one more time for giggles, right? There we go. That's pretty cool. So we'll create like two little offices here. I'll grab these two and I'll extrude these. Something like that. And what I will want to do is grab all of these vertices because I forgot to make it the same height as the ceiling. And down here in the Z, I'll just put those to 10 feet as well. Okay, now if we right click somewhere in our scene and do end isolate, we'll see all of our geometry. Okay, the next step is totally optional, but to add a touch more realism, um, I like to add floor trim. As you can see in the original video, I added this sort of floor trim around here. Um, you don't have to do that. A lot of these back rooms don't really have that floor trim, but I think it adds like another little bit of level of realism if you do have that. So what I'll do is um, I'll grab our main walls here and I'll isolate these. I'll stick another edit poly modifier on top of everything. Do edges and I'll go into one of our side views and grab all of the vertical edges and I'll connect these. Just do one and then what we'll do is we'll grab those vertices and I'll stick those down to maybe like one foot. One foot looks pretty good. Maybe a little less. If you can do maybe get away with six inches. Yeah, that's looking pretty a lot more realistic. So with that done, we'll grab all of those faces that we just created. And easy way to do that is just to control A and then deselect everything else that so we just have our loop down there with all of our um, floor trim and we'll do extrude um, by polygon by sorry by local normal and we'll extrude that out to be something like 0.5 inches or you know what maybe we'll just do one inch yeah one inch is good so we're going to want to start setting up some materials next so uh, with this floor trim created we can start planning for that so i'll hit this grow button and that grow button is going to grab all of those top faces of the extrusion that we just created for the floor trim. All right. And we're going to set this material ID to something like mm, two, right? And I'll do control I and inverse the selection. So it selects all of the walls and I'll set all the material IDs to one, right? So now the walls are going to be one and the floor trim is going to be two. Okay, so if we end isolate on our scene, I'm going to grab our two interior partition boxes that we created. I'm going to do the exact same process with the floor trim and setting up the material IDs. Okay, so let's focus back on our ceiling. Uh, we're going to have to do a similar thing here. We'll grab our faces and we probably want to grab those little extrusions on the inside because those are just part of the ceiling tiles themselves and not the grid. The grid is going to be a separate material. The ceiling tile is going to have it, its own material, right? So we'll do grow and we'll just grow and grab all of those extruded edges there. And we'll set those to, we'll keep those as one. And then we'll do control I in for the selection and grab just the grid and set all these to two, right? Okay, let's set up a material for our ceiling grid. So I'll pop open my material editor here, drag this over, and you can see all the material slots are black. So what we need to do is open the render setup dialog box here and under FStorm F settings, we'll go under tools and do convert scene to FStorm. It'll convert all of our materials and any lights and cameras and stuff that we have set up, even though we don't have any uh, lights set up quite yet. And um, I'll get rid of our uh, settings dialog box just for now. And this one, we're going to create a uh, multi sub object material so under general multi sub object and we can keep the old one that's fine um, so under the slot one this is going to be the ceiling tile itself so we'll call this ceiling tile right. and we'll just um we'll just set this to be a, a random color for right now um just so we can see what we're doing and then back here under slot two you know what we'll do is we'll just drag and drop this one down here and we'll just do uh, the instance as a copy. We'll open that one up and we'll call this um, grid. And this one is going to be like a gray, like a darker gray, something like that. We'll adjust these material properties in just a minute. Um, and then we're going to add a third slot down here for a light. So we'll copy that down and we'll call this lights. 
and we're going to check our emissions button right here and under the color we'll set this to like a yellow like an orangish sort of yellow right we can always adjust these materials later so we'll come back we'll set that to be yellow and we'll set the power to be something like five and we'll check direct illumination so it's going to act as a light so with that done we'll go back out to our main uh, material here and we'll just set number and we'll set this down to three because we're only going to use three materials for this ceiling we'll just call this ceiling that's going to be our full material so now what we'll do is we'll grab our ceiling and we'll just apply the material to it in our edit poly modifier we'll select polygon and we'll just go ahead and uh, select maybe like every two tiles to be a light okay so with those surfaces selected i'm going to set these material I, the material ID for these surfaces to be three and as soon as we do that you can see that they're uh, very yellow now <laughs> for the ceiling tile texture I actually downloaded it from opengameart.org and if you search for ceiling tile texture you'll find this really pretty realistic uh, high-res ceiling tile um, texture map that we can use so if I bring over my material editor um, in our ceiling tile um, material just scroll down and under the maps here under diffuse we'll just check this to be on and then where it says no map we'll create a new F storm bitmap we'll double click on that and we'll grab our ceiling tile okay. and we can check this little uh, show shaded material in viewport okay that should be all we need for right now for the ceiling what we'll do is we'll grab the ceiling itself and we'll toss a UVW map modifier onto the ceiling so we'll keep it as planar and we'll click on the UVW map modifier and we'll just scale this down to be about the size of one of the tiles. I mean, you can always exaggerate it a little bit so you can see it a little bit more in the in the render view, but something like that should be good. So it's, a, it's about the size of a tile. Right. Cool. One last thing we can do with that material is we can add a bump map because this comes with, you can download it in the pack, it comes with a normal map. Um, so what we'll do is under uh, bump, we'll check this to be on, and under no map, we'll select our F-Storm bitmap, and we'll select our ceiling grid bitmap. That'll give us a little bit of texture um, and provide a tiny little bit more realism to the, the material itself. And it's, right now it's set to be really high, so maybe we'll just do something like one inch. Um, we can always adjust that later. Okay, so that's our ceiling pretty much done. So let's do the floor next. So I'll grab our floor object, do Alt W to go back into perspective. I'll do Alt Q to uh, isolate just the floor and we'll drag over our material editor. And I do have a floor uh, map that I downloaded from textures.com. So textures.com is great because you can search for all kinds of different um, rugs and floors. And I even found this cool old wallpaper texture. Um, so you can download your own and follow along here. So we'll just call this one floor and we'll drag this down. Click check on our diffuse map and go to no map and we'll assign our floor texture map, one of the ones that I downloaded. I think it says fabric carpet 4K. So we'll assign that one and we'll show it in viewport. We'll go back here and we'll just toss that right on our floor just like that okay and that's all we're really gonna do with the floor material we're going to add a displacement map but it's a separate modifier which I'll show you in just a second next thing we're gonna to want to do is on our floor object we can even name this floor so we know what we're looking at in our layers um, we'll drop this down and we'll go to UVW map and we'll just quickly adjust this all this stuff is we're just gonna have to adjust all the sizing and everything once we get our camera in here and um, really get a feel for the the scale of the scene um, so with that done we'll toss on our f storm displacement modifier what this is going to do is add uh, displacement to the material and give it more of a grit more of a bump because we're probably going to get the camera pretty close to it just like i did here in this um, example video and you can see like right when the camera adjusts focus you can see the the displacement in the actual carpet itself and that's just adds a little bit more realism and dimension 
especially if you have more complex lights in your scene. Okay, so with that done, we'll go ahead and select our texture. It says no map. Make sure you choose, you don't choose bitmap under general. You want to choose f-storm bitmap, right? Um, and then that's going to generate this little map here and we'll just drag this somewhere into our material editor slots. Just, we'll choose one here as an instance. Click OK. And that's going to expose all of these parameters here that we can um, adjust and uh, a file that we can locate and uh, add to be our uh, height map. So I've already downloaded this um, height map from textures.com. So if you go to one of these materials, um, you know, you'll, you can see this uh, height map. So this is the one you're going to want. Assign it here. Okay. So under our displacement, the power is set to one inch, which might be total overkill. Um, but we'll circle back to that once we start doing a little bit of render testing. Okay. So let's focus on our walls now. So we do end isolate. We'll grab our walls, our exterior walls here and do alt Q to isolate those. And let's set up a material for our walls next. So click on one of our empty material editor slots and we'll do a similar thing that we did for the ceiling grid. We'll do a multi sub object and we can keep the old material. That's fine. And so we'll just call this um, our walls. The first material is going to be the actual wallpaper or, you know, the, the color of the walls themselves. Um, so we'll just, um, we'll just leave this as white for now and we'll just call this walls. If I can type. <laughs> and then we'll go back to our main material and then we'll copy this one down and this is going to be our floor trim. So we'll just call this trim. And we can color this one, yeah, we'll keep it like a gray like that. Um, that should be fine. And then under our walls material, well, first first thing we can do, we can do set number and we'll just set this to two because we're only gonna need two materials in here. So in our walls material, we'll just drag this down and check our diffuse map and we'll just add an F-Storm bitmap. And then we're going to want to select one of our walls. Well, I, I did download one of those um, old ripped wallpaper textures from textures.com. It was this one actually. But you can find your own. You can. There's all these different types of, of wallpapers and stuff that you can choose from. Another thing I do want to mention is an AI uh, tool that you can use that's free. It's actually really cool. It's called Leonardo.ai, and you can generate your own um, like wallpaper textures or um, carpet textures or anything else that you want to use in your scene. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, so you can choose um, this neat little feature down here. It says tiling. And you can do, uh, you can create like repeated textures, which is really interesting. So it's just like another tool for your tool belt. You can come in here and give it a prompt, generate one of these. Um, I already generated a few of them. They were pretty cool. Um, you can create all kinds of different prompts and stuff. And this is definitely not an ad for <laughs> Leonardo.ai. Leonardo I just thought it was like an interesting tool. Uh, so you've been using it a little bit and it's just something that, you know, to keep in mind. Um, so we'll see what it generates for us. And this is kind of cool. I mean, I don't know this is kind of really loud for our scene, but something like that could really work. Um, but for now, I think we'll just stick with uh, one of these textures from textures.com because it's just pretty easy to use. Um, so I already have that downloaded. So I'll go ahead and select that. Um, click on open. And that's all we're going to do. And what I'll do is I'll click on show shaded material and viewport. And then with our wall selected, I'll just add that to the walls. And we'll toss a UVW map modifier, and then we're going to choose box, and then grab our um, modifier and just shrink this down and isolate. Um, we'll grab our walls and our boxes that we created for our partitions and isolate those. And what we can do is we can grab our UVW map modifier and copy it, select both of our wall partitions, add the wall material, and then we can even paste this as an instance to the material. Now, if we look in our camera view, some th weird things can happen where you'll see like this repeat uh, of the tile. So that's kind of weird. So what we can do is we can grab that and we can even just rotate the material. We can just like offset it. That, that gives us a lot more variation and it's just like an easy cheap little 
cheat, you know, cheat code to, to get your materials uh, to, to, to look like they're not repeating. Anyway, that's our um, walls, our floor, and our ceiling uh, pretty much done. So what we can do is we can, let's see what happens if we try to render this thing. So we'll open up our render dialog box. And for output size, I'll just choose HD video for right now, 1080 by 1920. In our camera, I'll um, show save frames so we can see the frames. It'll just frame up the shot for us. And um, under FStorm settings, under interactive renderer, we'll just do run RT mode. And we'll see what this thing looks like. Okay, so the scene is black. On our ceiling, we forgot to flip the normals. So let's toss a normal modifier on here. So if you go and type N, click on normal, that's gonna flip the normals so they're facing downward. And that's exactly what we want. So now, if we do, if we hit our interactive renderer, RT mode here, should see this thing illuminated now. It should look pretty cool. Okay, so that's looking pretty gruesome, right? <laughs> pretty yellow. So what we could do is uh, we can adjust our color a little bit, maybe make it a little bit more on the orange side. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And we can even tone that down a little bit. Something like 30. It's looking pretty gruesome. What we can do also, we can adjust the, the uh, wall map a little bit. So we go under our walls material and under walls, we can leave this to be like a gray or even like a white or something. And then we'll go down here to our um, diffuse map slot. And that's set to be 100%. We can set that down to be like 60% or something. So I think this is looking pretty good for now. So let's play with the camera a little bit. So if in our viewport here, um, I'll just drop down our cameras and then I'll do select camera. With our camera selected, we'll just get this out of the way. So I'll scroll down here in the camera and I'll increase the amount of glare. So the glare right now is set to 0.01. So maybe we can do like 0.1, see what that looks like. That's really gonna blow out those lights, which is pretty cool. There's like a lot of, um, looks like dust or something in the air. So maybe that's a little too much. Maybe something at like 0.06 maybe 0 0.04 or something like that. And you can play with this to your liking, but for right now, I think this is looking pretty good. This is looking pretty realistic. Now, a couple things we can adjust, of course, like in the ceiling grid, you can tell that the um, there's a lot of hard edges up here. And it's one really cool feature that I like to show you. Um, so if we go back to our um, ceiling material and under the ceiling tile, um, we can scroll down here and under rounded edges, there's a radius option here. So we can do something like 0.25 inches. What that's gonna do is gonna round off the edges of the ceiling tile and give us a little bit more of like a, uh, um, a chamfered edge, like a bevel edge. So they're not so sharp. It just adds a little bit more realism to the tiles. It's like barely noticeable, but you can tell that there's no sharp edges now. Pretty cool. And then of course, one more thing we could do, we can adjust the material, the, sorry, the UVW map on the actual geometry itself to be a little bit more like a box. So it doesn't so see, see these little imperfections there. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hit pause on that. And under our UVW map modifier, we can set this to be a box. Click on that and we can scale this up. Now, if we go back here, we bring back over our interactive renderer and we hit refresh there we go so that's like a lot more natural so uh, we don't have any of those weird imperfections anymore in the ceiling grid okay next up we're going to be animating our camera using the camtrack ar smartphone app so the camtrack ar app is super easy to use once you have it installed you pop it open you do a quick scan of your scene to detect the floors and walls and ceiling and uh, don't mind my sleeping dog on the floor he's very lazy and then as soon as the two top left lights turn green, you can uh, choose your floor and then create a few positional markers on the floor to indicate um, the direction that you're facing. Typically I like to create a little triangle and then hit record and you start walking around. And as soon as you're done with your track, CamTrack AR will export out that FBX file for you. It's a really cool app. Okay, so now that we have our FBX file generated from CamTrack AR, um, let's go ahead and import that. So I'll go to File, Import, and I'll go to the location I saved it to on my Dropbox. 
and I'll go ahead and import that FBX file. Just make sure animation is checked and click OK. And then we'll go into a top view and you can see that it imported a camera and those three positional markers that we uh, that we that we located um, before we recorded the video if you remember that. And then we go to group and we'll just group this together and I'll place this somewhere in my scene. You can, this is totally up to you. And then I'll rotate this so it uh, faces forward. So those positional markers, those, the triangle is facing forward. That's how, I, that's how I know that I'm going in the right direction. And I originally recorded this camera like sort of laying on the ground first and then getting up. So I'll just move that up a little bit above our floor and we're good to go. So what we can do is we can look through the camera and see like what it looks like. So if I go to AR camera, and what we're gonna have to do is increase our time configuration because it looks like we're running out of frames here. So I'll uh, open up our time configuration window, set the frame car count to something like a thousand. Not entirely sure. That's a little much, maybe like 900. We can adjust that later. And if we play this out, it should walk forward and kind of look around. Pretty cool. So now this is an awesome way to track a camera without having to do any like post-processing or do anything with After Effects or, or whatever. It's just like super quick and dirty and I just love it for that. Okay, so the last thing we want to do in 3ds Max is we want to grab our F-Storm camera and link it to the tracked camera. The reason why we want to do that is because we want to take full advantage of the glare and all the awesome settings that are within uh, the F-Storm camera itself. What we want to do is we can grab our camera and under um, targeted, we could just uncheck targeted. And then we can use the align tool to, uh, with our camera selected, select the align tool and then select the tracked camera. And then we can choose to align orientation, local X, Y, and Z. And so that'll position it right directly on top of it and it'll assume all of the camera rotation and stuff. Next thing we can do is we can use select and link, select the link tool up here and we can click on our camera or f-storm camera and then we can choose and then drag right over the top of the tracked camera and that'll link the animation to the tracked camera so now if we look in this is it's still our AR camera but if we look through our f-storm camera one uh, we can uh, now uh, view and render the scene through our f-storm camera so if I select the camera itself select camera, increase or decrease the field of view. So I'm gonna increase it a little bit so we have a little bit more of a wide angle shot, something like that. And that's looking pretty good. So the last steps we can take with this before we render it out is in my original uh, video, I added some, uh, I had like some props. I added like a phone, like a telephone in the corner and uh, some creatures kind of make it kind of creepy, right? And all that is, is just like, um, it's just a character, uh, like a character mesh that I added a noise modifier and then I just animated it coming toward me. So if you're interested in learning how to create like characters, you want to do some like animated characters or something in your scene, um, let me know in the comments below and we can do a little tutorial about that. So that's all the adjustments we want to make in our 3ds Max scene. So let's pop over to Premiere and I'll show you how to do some post-processing to, uh, to the final result. Okay, so in Adobe Premiere, um, I brought in my footage, and the first thing that I did was add a camera blur. Um, and if you type in uh, effects, if you type in blur, um, there's all kinds of different blurs. I just did a, a, a really standard camera, camera blur at the very beginning. That's something that you could definitely do in 3ds Max on the camera itself. You can animate the, um, the sort of blur on it. Uh, but I just chose to do it in post just so I have a little bit more extra control. Um, so that's... That's what that is. And then the rest of the effects are uh, basically just a VHS effect that I created uh, with multiple layers, right? So the first layer is just like some adjustments to the lumetri color. Uh, so that gives me like a little bit more um, contrast um, to, to the shot and a little bit more grime to it. And I added a little bit of uh, vignetting on the edges, you can see there. And then I did some uh, channel offsets. So I did some channel blur to the red and uh, blue channel so it, it, you can't really tell um, right away what it's doing but it does give you that sort of like old film quality VHS effect right and then the last couple um, adjustments I did was a uh, an unsharpened mask so if we really go heavy with this unsharpened mask you can you can really tell what it does if you, you know it like really gives you that um, sort of like uh, CCTV camera effect 
um, where it's like very kind of bad quality, <laughs> kind of destroys the quality of it, which is pretty cool. Um, and then at the last uh, is just a, some film noise, some uh, some just general noise um, to, to give it a little bit more of like a handheld video quality. We can even crank that up a little bit, uh, but you want to go too crazy with it, just enough uh, where it gives you a little bit of a grain, right? And then as far as like sound design goes, I found like this really cool track on Epidemic Sound on the actual main track I just put in a pitch shifter some a bunch of reverb and like a phaser and that's really all that's so that's just like modulating the sort of like pitch um, transposing the pitch of like the music whenever like you see one of the entities and then after that I just added a few more uh, little sound effects for the phone and uh, some intense um, sound effects a little bit more film grain when uh, you know one of the entities like comes in and flies towards you um, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. So the post-processing involved with creating videos like this looks simple, but it is quite intensive. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, getting a little bit more deeper into how to create these videos and the post-processing involved, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll create a separate tutorial about it. Well, fellow Backrooms Explorers, that's the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Looking forward to the next one and always remember, Never touch the entities. See you guys.